Now, do stay with us because we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back uh, here on Global, we'll have uh, uh, that interview with the daughter of Mohammed Najibullah, the former president of Afghanistan, who was tortured to death by the Taliban in the 1990s. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing that interview uh, here on the program. Also ahead, we've been reporting on the effects of uh, climate change on the planet. We'll look at uh, how it's making young people feel around the world, how they're increasingly anxious a new survey on that so all of that is coming up on the program here in a moment too don't go away This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrilli Waller. On today's Global, BBC Research finds the number of days when temperature is over 50 degrees Celsius has tripled since the 1980s. Extreme heat is now more common than at any time in human history. Surveys suggest climate change is also making young people increasingly worried for their futures. We'll hear their voices. That's the most scary bit, really, what's going to happen in future generations down the line. It's definitely not a place that I want my kids to live in. Also on Global, I'll be talking to Hila Najibullah, whose father was president of Afghanistan and was murdered by the Taliban in the 1990s. Her thoughts on history repeating itself, on the Taliban taking over again, and the prospects for Afghanistan, here live on the programme. And Aaron is here with the business, including Boeing is getting ready for it, says will be growing demand for airliners after the pandemic. Hello and welcome back to Global. In another disturbing indicator of the speed of climate change, new BBC Global Research reveals significant increases in the number of days temperatures around the world are hitting 50 degrees or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Hila, we have to leave there because we have uh, run out of time. But thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News. Uh, Hila Najibullah talking to us here on BBC World News. I'm back with more of the day's headlines here in just a moment. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrilli Waller. On today's Global, BBC Research finds the number of days when the temperature is over 50 degrees Celsius has tripled since the 1980s. Extreme heat is now more common than at any time in human history. Nigeria is seeing temperatures rise and devastating droughts, and the country's oil industry is making matters even worse. We have a special report. Also on today's Global, tough questions on Capitol Hill to the US Secretary of State on the US pullout from Afghanistan. Who is responsible? Who made the decisions on this? Was it the President of the United States? Uh, ultimately, uh, the President makes the decisions. That's correct. The UK is to offer COVID jabs to 12 to 15 year olds and booster jabs for the over 50s as it prepares for another coronavirus winter. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna... And Broadway is back. Theatres allowed full houses from today. We'll hear from New York, from the star of Chicago.
Hello and welcome to Global in another disturbing indicator of the speed of climate change. New BBC research reveals a significant increase in the number of days temperatures around the world are hitting 50 degrees, 122 degrees in Fahrenheit. Paolo Schott talking to me a little earlier and good luck to him and the rest of the cast for uh, tonight's uh, first uh, production back after Covid with hopefully, as you were saying, a full house. Before we leave, let me just uh, take you back to Washington, to Capitol Hill. That session still going on. So we've had two and a half hours of uh, some pretty tough questions to Anthony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, uh, over the US pullout from Afghanistan. We'll bring you more of the top lines here in half an hour in our next edition of Global as the question continue to be asked but I'm back in a moment or two with more of the day's headlines don't go away This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller. On today's Global, BBC research finds the number of days when the temperature is over 50 degrees Celsius has tripled since the 1980s. Extreme heat is now more common than at any time in human history. We'll look at what can be done. The effects are particularly acute in megacities like Karachi. We have a special report from Pakistan. It's only 11 o'clock and the sun is beating down and the pollution, it makes it even worse. Some here wonder how long they can go on like this. Also on today's Global Tough Questions on Capitol Hill to the US Secretary of State on the US pullout from Afghanistan. Who is responsible? Who made the decisions on this? Was it the President of the United States? Uh, ultimately, uh, the President makes the decisions, that's correct. We'll bring you our interview with Hila Najibullah, whose father was president of Afghanistan and was murdered by the Taliban in the 1990s. And the UK is to offer COVID booster jabs for the over 50s as it prepares for another coronavirus winter. Hello and welcome to Global. In another disturbing indicator of the speed of climate change, new BBC research reveals a significant increase in the number of days temperatures around the world are hitting 50 degrees, 122 degrees in Fahrenheit. Well, that was Hila Najibullah talking to me a little earlier on today's programme. That's it. We've run out of time. Thanks so much for watching. Next up here, it is time for Focus on Africa. See you again at the same time tomorrow. Bye bye. Hello. As we head to Europe for this world weather catch up, we cast our. So we can well, there we're going to come away for never, just a few ever. minutes uh, from that testimony on Capitol Hill. As we heard uh, the chair a little earlier saying, it was damning, devastating, compelling, at times graphic testimony from those four gymnasts. Uh, uh, barely contained fury at different uh, stages uh, aimed at the FBI and their multiple failings in the investigation of Larry Nasser. Uh, let's go straight to Gary O'Donoghue who's there in Washington listening and Gary it was incredibly powerful and disturbing what we've just been listening to that that testimony from those four and what they went through and then what happened to them when they alerted the authorities. Fantastic pictures. Uh, just time before we uh, go to a break to tell you what we have coming up in the next edition. We will have plenty more coverage from Afghanistan. A month since the Taliban took over. We have a special report from Azari Sharif. Also, Jeremy Bowen is in Kabul for us. And of course, we'll have much more of that compelling testimony going on in Capitol Hill. All of that here in a moment or two.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's Global, four US gymnasts testify in the Senate over the FBI's failures in its sex abuse investigation of the former team doctor Larry Nasser. America's most decorated gymnast Simone Biles chokes back tears as she says no other young gymnast should have to experience the horror she endures to this day. To be clear, I blame Larry Nasser and I also blame an entire system that enabled and perpetrated his abuse. Well, this is the scene live at that committee hearing. We'll bring you the latest throughout today's programme. Right. Also on Global... Senator Padilla. One month since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan. Well, this was Mazari Sharif in North Afghanistan, days before the Taliban takeover. The BBC has returned with a special report of the reality now. There are four dead bodies laid out here. One of them has a note on top of it saying, these men were kidnappers. Anyone who wants to do the same, this is going to be their punishment. And a new book claims America's top general, Mark Milley, made secret plans to prevent the former president, Donald Trump, from misusing nuclear weapons. Hello oh, and welcome to Global. It was America's biggest case of sexual abuse in sport. Now, some of the victims of Larry Nasser, Team USA's gymnastics doctor, have been giving compelling testimony. Well, before we close, uh, let me just uh, remind you of uh, what we've been seeing here in the last couple of hours, because uh, before Christopher Ray, we were there uh, at that Senate uh, committee hearing from the four gymnasts. Uh, uh, they were uh, giving and detailing uh, what they've been through over the last few years. Uh, as I say, that is the story that is dominating here on BBC World News. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrelli Waller. On today's Global, four US gymnasts testify in the Senate over the FBI's failures in its sex abuse investigation of the former team doctor, Larry Nasser. America's most decorated gymnast, Simone Biles, chokes back tears as she says no other young gymnast should have to experience the horror she endures to this day. To be clear, I blame Larry Nasser and I also blame an entire system that enabled and perpetrated his abuse. This is seen live at that committee hearing. The FBI director is currently being questioned. We'll bring you the latest throughout the programme. Also on Global, one month since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan. Well, this was Mazari Sharif in the north of the country, days before the Taliban took over. The BBC has returned with a special report of the reality now. There are four dead bodies laid out here. One of them has a note on top of it saying, these men were kidnappers. Anyone who wants to do the same, this is going to be their punishment. And a new book claims America's top general, Mark Milley, made a secret plan to prevent the former President Donald Trump from misusing nuclear weapons. Hello and welcome to Global. It was America's biggest case of sexual abuse in sport. Now some of the victims of Larry Nasser, Team USA's gymnastics doctor, have been giving compelling testimony to the US Senate. Barbara, thanks very much. And the White House just saying that President Biden has complete confidence in the top US general. That brings us to the end of the programme. Thanks so much for watching here on uh, Global on BBC World News. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Next up here in it is time for Focus on Africa. See you tomorrow.
Hello, thanks for joining me. Thomas Schaffernacker here with your latest weather update. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amberley Waller. On today's Global, China slams a new defence pact between the US, Britain and Australia, saying it shows a Cold War mentality. The deal will let Australia build nuclear-powered submarines for the first time. The British Prime Minister says it will preserve security around the world. But the EU and France react angrily after Australia scraps its multi-billion dollar deal to buy French submarines. Un coup dans le dos. It's a stab in the back. We had established a relationship of trust with Australia, but that trust has been broken. There's a lot of bitterness about this cancellation. This matter is not over. We'll get the latest from Beijing, Paris and Washington. Also on today's programme, fleeing Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, a group of Afghan female football players arrive in Pakistan. We'll be speaking to a former cricketer and footballer about the future of sport in that country. I can't see any way out of it. I just don't have any hopes or any dreams anymore that I will be able to be in my country, play on a green football ground. And the first all-civilian space crew to orbit the Earth lifts off from Cape Canaveral. Hello and welcome to today's Global Britain. The US and Australia have launched a new defence and security partnership with plans to develop a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines for the Australian Navy. Boris Johnson says the project will be crucial in the protection of the Allies' shared interests in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, a never-before-seen Vincent van Gogh drawing of an exhausted old man went on display at an Amsterdam museum for the first time today. Study for Worn Out, which van Gogh drew early in his career in 1882, has been hidden away in a Dutch family's private collection for more than a century. The new drawing will be on temporary display at the museum until January the 2nd before returning to the private collection. Now we're going to take a short break. When we're back, we'll have plenty more on that uh, main story. Uh, just let me tell you, in the last few minutes, the White House has said the US and France did discuss this Australia submarine deal before the announcement. Uh, so the fallout continues. We'll have more here in a moment or two. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amberley Waller. On today's Global, China slams a new defence pact between the US, Britain and Australia, saying it shows a Cold War mentality. The deal will let Australia build nuclear power submarines for the first time. The British Prime Minister says it will preserve security around the world. But the EU and France react angrily after Australia scraps its multi-billion dollar deal to buy French submarines. Un coup dans le dos. It's a stab in the back. We had established a relationship of trust with Australia, but that trust has been broken. There's a lot of bitterness about this cancellation. This We'll get more from Beijing, from Canberra and from Washington, also in today's Global. In business, the new normal. Millions of Indians return to the office. We'll hear from India's biggest private employer. back to today's global let's get more on our main story because britain the us and australia have launched a new defense and security partnership with plans to develop a fleet of nuclear powered submarines for the australian navy well a great piece there from ros it's had nearly a million hits on twitter
Now, just before we go, a great story from India to show you. The bank accounts of two men in Bihar were accidentally credited $122 million. They were shocked when they saw that sum hit their accounts, but their bank manager, he stopped the withdrawal of the money and launched an investigation. Boy. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrediwala. On today's Global, China slams a new defence pact between the US, Britain and Australia, saying it shows a Cold War mentality. The deal will let Australia build nuclear-powered submarines for the first time. The British Prime Minister says it will preserve security around the world. But the EU and France react angrily after Australia scraps its multi-billion dollar deal to buy French submarines. A coup dans le dos. It's a stab in the back. We had established a relationship of trust with Australia, but that trust has been broken. There's a lot of bitterness about this cancellation. This matter is not over. We'll get the latest from Beijing, Paris and Washington. Also in today's Global, fleeing Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, a group of Afghan female football players arrive in Pakistan. We'll hear from a former cricketer and a footballer about the future of sport in that country. I can't see any way out of it. I just don't have any hopes or any dreams anymore that I will be able to be in my country, play on a green football ground. And the first all-civilian space crew to orbit the Earth lifts off from Cape Canaveral. Hello and welcome to Global Britain. The US and Australia have launched a new defence and security partnership with plans to develop a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines for the Australian Navy. Well, that's almost it for this edition. Just a quick update on our main story, that security pact between the US, UK and Australia. We said earlier the White House had said the US and France had discussed the deal before the announcement. A flat contradiction in the last few moments from France, denying the US consulted in advance on this Australian submarine decision. Very interesting contradiction. More here in the level. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrediwala. On today's Global, China slams a new defence pact between the US, Britain and Australia, saying it shows a Cold War mentality. The deal will let Australia build nuclear-powered submarines for the first time. The British Prime Minister says it will preserve security around the world. But the EU and France react angrily after Australia scraps its multi-billion dollar deal to buy French submarines. A coup dans le dos. It's a stab in the back. We had established a relationship of trust with Australia, but that trust has been broken. There's a lot of bitterness about this cancellation. This matter is not over. We'll get the latest from Beijing, Paris and Washington. Also in Global, fleeing Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, a group of Afghan female football players arrive in Pakistan. We'll hear from a former cricketer and a footballer about the future of sport in that country. I can't see any way out of it. I just don't have any hopes or any dreams anymore that I will be able to be in my country, play on a green football ground.
Hello and welcome to Global Britain. The US and Australia have launched a new defence and security partnership with plans to develop a fleet of nuclear powered submarines for the Australian Navy. Ah, uh, <laughs> very good uh, end point. What a lovely interview to actually Thank do. Uh, thanks so much for uh, being with us. Uh, those are the times uh, on the screens that uh, you can see that full hard talk interview with Zainab and Naomi Campbell. Absolutely sounds uh, wonderful from the clips we've seen. That's it from us and Global. Thank you so much for watching. Next up here, it's time to focus on Africa. Bye bye. Hello, Pastor Francis Born the Brunt.